Hey, Jim Allister, good morning to you, Jim. Good morning. Good morning. Let's step through some of what's happened today. The use of this, uh, this quote in the Daily Telegraph, ready for peace, prepared for war. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson saying the EU must distance itself from that immediately. And he's calling for the Irish government to use its influence. Yes, I agree with all that. I, I think it's quite clear that the EU is trying deliberately to taunt and to uh, be provocative. Uh, and, you know, this is the same EU that went apoplectic and told us that you couldn't break international law. And here they are offering and boasting that they will uh, go to war trade-wise in respect of an international treaty which they propose to break if someone else dares to use a clause that's in the protocol to try and better their position. You know, they can't have it both ways, but of course they normally try to, and this is another example of that. And it is quite clear that this protocol, despite what um, Sorsha has just said, has made constitutional change. You don't believe me, believe a High Court judge who said that the effect of the protocol, because it's incompatible with the Acts of Union, namely Article 6, has superseded, has repealed that particular article. So that is constitutional change, constitutional change that we were promised uh, under the Belfast Agreement couldn't happen without consent and patently has. Uh, uh, and therefore, you know, I think it's quite clear that uh, the protocol is wholly incompatible with our position as an integral part of the United Kingdom. And that's the basis and the reason why it can never be acceptable to any unionist. And uh, a, a, a United Kingdom without a post-Brexit trade deal, Jim, is better, is it, than having the protocol? Yes, because the protocol divides the United Kingdom, particularly... Try telling that to the people of this country when they see the prices that will be associated no, 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 with no, that no, scenario. Let's not get, let's not get hysterical with this, David. Let's not, let's not get hysterical with this. Tell the people of the United Kingdom why the, why the uh, people of Northern Ireland, why they've got increasing prices, because they can't get supplies from their normal GB market. Well, uh, they can't get some of them, can't they? That, yes, that's what, the, that's what the protocol has done to us. It has partitioned the United Kingdom. It has created the, uh, the preposterous uh, uh, of an Irish sea border. It has cut us off from our main market. Uh, it, with the resulting impact on prices and manufacturers, uh, and it has it denuded and diminished our position in the United Kingdom by virtue of dismantling Article 6, one of the pillars of the UK. What is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland but an economic union and a political union? Are the you economic seriously... union is based on Article 6, and that, we are told, has been repealed. So of are course, you seriously going, going to pretend, economic... Jim, that, that the United Kingdom would be in a good place without a trade deal with the EU? Trade deal is desirable. But there are other terms upon which you can trade. But it's equally desirable, maybe more so, to the EU. They sell more to us than we sell to them. So I think there is a lot of uh, rhetoric and, and empty rhetoric from the EU in this matter. But the fundamental here is, is Northern Ireland part of the United Kingdom or is it not? And if we are, then we have to have restored to us the equilibrium on trade and we have to have removed a border which partitions and prevents that trade within the United Kingdom. That's the fundamental. And if the EU is so intent on annexing Northern Ireland into the EU, as they have done through the protocol, that they're prepared to go to war in trade terms with GB uh, and with the UK, then it tells us a great deal about the pernicious malevolent, malevolent intent of the EU, as epitomised in those appalling words used this morning uh, to try and up the ante and the rhetoric. Jim Alistair, thank you.